I have no comment on any of that. <laughs> Thank Ed, you. Madam Chair, I think, uh, I think Senator Peters might be next. But if you Senator want me to Peters, go now, I'm happy to do that. Senator Peters, if you were here before Senator Heinrich, you should definitely go next. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Madam Chair. Secretary Orlando, um, uh, I certainly thank you. Good to see you again, as always. Uh, thank, you. thank you for your testimony. You know, earlier this year, I called uh, on your department and, and this administration to do more to combat the uh, economic and national security threat posed by Chinese-made uh, uh, electric uh, vehicles. I believe that we must ensure that the, uh, the EV industry is built uh, in the United States uh, and in Michigan to create and protect good-paying union jobs uh, for Michiganders but also ensure that U.S. manufacturing remains strong and competitive uh, against the, uh, the Chinese. And that's why I applaud the uh, Trade Representative's announcement yesterday that your department will quadruple tariffs on Chinese-made uh, vehicles to combat unfair trade practices and protect American competitiveness. Uh, increasing Section 301 tariffs on Chinese-made products is certainly a step in the, in the right direction. But well, my question for you, ma'am, is wh what is the department preparing to do to prevent tariff evasion uh, by Chinese companies? Uh, we know that some uh, Chinese uh, automakers are pursuing footprints in, in Mexico uh, and uh, in Europe, and we must uh, uh, ensure that we don't allow those actors to evade rules uh, meant to create a level playing field. So, so how is the department taking this into account in its enforcement strategy for uh, what I think is a the right thing to do, but we have to be able to enforce. I couldn't agree more. So let me first say this. Um, first of all, thank you for your push, persistent push on this. Uh, in, I think Europe provides a cautionary tale because there were no tariffs. And before you knew it, China went quite quickly from zero to 25% market share in Europe of their EVs because of, of China's distortive practices in keeping the price low. Right. So the reason that we, President, took this action to put a 100% tariff is so that that doesn't happen to us. Uh, and we, we, I was proud of the President to do that because I think it's necessary um, to protect our market and protect our workers. Now you, you point out another extremely important issue because of USMCA cars made in Mexico, you know, it's, an, it's a risk that we worry about. Um, I can tell you, obviously, this is within the USTR's purview, not really my purview, with three-on-one tariffs, the USTR, working very closely with Customs and Border Patrol. We are very focused on this risk. We, we are worried about this. We know, we know, we have a public reports that Chinese companies are setting up shop in Mexico, uh, so we're tracking it. What the Commerce Department is doing is helping USTR by providing um, like industry analysis and such. And I can just tell you that uh, the purpose of USMCA was not to help China. It was to help the you know, trade pact with the signatories of that agreement. And we're going to do whatever we need to do to make sure China doesn't use Mexico to end run around these new tariffs. Well, I appreciate that. And I appreciate the President's strong action. He, he's always fought for American jobs. and. This is a, a prime example uh, of the president uh, taking uh, action. The uh, I'm Secretary, you know, the CCP-backed vehicles, uh, however, don't just pose a threat, an economic threat to the United States. Uh, they also th threat a real security threat uh, as well to our nation. We can't allow the CCP to deploy the same playbook we saw with telecommunications uh, equipment, such as Huawei and ZTE, when they flooded the U.S. market and created uh, espionage and sabotage uh, threat. Your department recently announced an investigation into the national security concerns of Chinese connected vehicles. And I have urged you to use this investigation to, to take a closer look at the CCP uh, backed uh, automobiles. Uh, now, I, I realize uh, you can't share uh, uh, all. Uh, this is not a classified setting. Uh, but I would like you to discuss some of your concerns regarding connected vehicles from China and, what we can and when uh, we can expect a proposed rule from commerce on Chinese uh, connected vehicles. Yeah. Uh, the comment period just closed, and we expect to have the rule out this fall. Uh, we received significant comments that we have to s go through. Look, I would say the national security risks are quite significant. If you think about these connected vehicles, 
They have thousands of sensors, thousands of chips. They know, they're controlled by software, which is coming from Beijing in the mm -hmm. case of Chinese-made cars. They know where the driver goes, what the driving patterns are, what you're saying in your car. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of data around U.S. persons that goes right back to Beijing. It's not totally different than the threat of TikTok, which this Congress took, took, took action on, with the threat of you know, uh, cranes at U.S. ports. 90 plus percent of cranes at U.S. ports are Chinese made. Cranes are no longer, you know, steel. They are connected. So I think it falls into the broader category of all of these connected, you know, technologies which collect massive amounts of data on U.S. citizens, uh, our children, our families, our military personnel, et cetera, all going back to Beijing. By the way, not to mention the fact that the software, I mean, you can imagine the most catastrophic outcome, theoretically, if you had a couple million cars on the road and the software were, mm -hmm. um, uh, what do you call it, disabled. Yeah, shut off. Uh, so in any event, I'll leave it at that in a non-classified setting, but we decided to take action because it's, this is really serious stuff. We appreciate it. Thanks for your leadership. Thank you, Madam Chair.